It's taken Japan by storm, and now it's ready to conquer the globe. This is Bushido, the toughest form of hand-to-hand -hand combat in the sporting world. The spirit of Bushido brings together in the same ring the martial arts and kickboxing, wrestling and western-style boxing. This is not wrestling as you've known it before. This is for real. My name is Ted Pelk, and I'm going to take you through the rules. In professional wrestling rules, you may not use the pointy part of your elbow or punch to the head with a clenched fist. You are not allowed to headbutt in any way, and if any kind of butting occurs, it will be considered a foul and points will be deducted. When your opponent is on both hands and knees, you may not kick to the head. If and when your opponent raises even one hand and is able to defend himself, you are allowed to kick to any part of the body, including the head. When your opponent has both knees and both hands on the ground, you may not kick to the head, but you can kick anywhere else. Four points are deducted when a suplex results in a count. Three points for a knockdown. And one point for a suplex. You can break a submission hold by escaping to the rope, but one point will be deducted. Bouts can end in KO, TKO, or submission. We're back at the Korakuen Hall in the heart of Tokyo for a top-class four-bout card that includes Tamura against Anjo. Our commentators feature Jeff Thompson, a five-time world karate champion. He's alongside our American technical expert, Ted Pelk. First up on the card is America's Tom Burton squaring off against UWF International's Yuko Miyato. Two UWFI stylists, Kyoshi Tamura and Yoji Anjo, JT Southern up against Kazuo Yamazaki, and in the main event, Tatsuo Nakano versus Nobuhiko Takada. Tom Burton fighting out of the red corner, coming in at 240 pounds. This is his third fight in the UWF International, and he's looking for his first win. His opponent in the blue corner, Yuko Miyato, coming in at 200 pounds. Big weight difference in this. We'll see how Miyato does. Burton certainly intent on making sure he can rectify this, this loss record of his. But into the action, Miyato in the blue corner, Burton in the red corner. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, he's... Miyato getting in early there. Right away, Miyato already knows that he should be throwing in those slow kicks. Do the, do the other fighters study the other fights while they're going on? I mean, in sumo, they do this a lot. Yes, they do. If, if they've just finished their match, they'll come in and look at the other matches. Before their match, generally, they just try to calm down, bring themselves down, and relax just before the match. They both be, seem to be relaxing in the corner, and the referee has to get in there to part them, bringing us back into the middle of the ring for the action. Remember, this is a 15-point, 30-minute bout. With Burton giving away nothing at the moment. And Miyato paying him a bit of respect. Well, blew Miyato that statement Miyato is sticking out the door. with his striking ability right now. He's not going in to wrestle him. Showing a bit of arrogance, isn't he, Miyato? Well, he wants to stay away from Burton. I, I still don't think I'd um, drop my hands against Burton. With the size of that coming at you, you put your hands up and treat him with the uttermost respect. Miyato is, should be throwing those low kicks, which he is doing. The low kick changes the sport so much. In a boxing match, you can get really close to your opponent, and you can just throw a flurry of punches and try to get in hooks and uppercuts and what, what you have. In this sport, you can't do that. If you get too close in distance, you'll get grabbed, you'll get kneed, you'll get low kicked, or, or simply the, your opponent might just grab you and take you down over in a suplex. Or maybe just even knock you out. <laughs> Which may knock you out because on a suplex you slam your opponent on the back of his head or the back of his neck. All vying for that vital hold. I mean, Burton seems really intense. And like 
Burton wants to get Miato down on the ground, but he's scared to get inside because he knows if he jumps inside, there might be a knee waiting for him. Miato very quick on those low kicks. And Burton can't take too many of those. Give him one back of his own. Miato smiling. Almost Miyato with nonchalance. Miato saying, nah, your kicks mean nothing. Uh, How much is Burton don't. weigh? <laughs> and he's calling him on. I mean, Miyato really impresses me in that he seems to have the movement of a karate fighter. But as you said, it's a lot more than that. He's got the speed and precision, and he's added the strength the confidence and as you say that all important wrestling groundwork skill yes and you'll notice when Miyato's throwing those low kicks he's not connecting with the instep of his foot he's connecting with like the knee and the shin actually yes I mean that is a big difference I mean for viewers at home who may even be recognizing his style of karate as Kokushinkai in Kokushinkai you would use the instep in some of the knockdown bouts, but the shin is really being used here to good effect. He, and the objective, as you say, is to knock the guy out. In many kicking styles, people do kick with the instep. In his style, what he, the kind of kicks that he's throwing, he's using the shin, which is very effective. And he's not, he's not aiming just for the target, he's aiming through the target. He's aiming a few inches further than the target. He's really putting all his weight into that kick. Well, we used to have an old saying that if it goes through the stomach, it should go through the spine. But anyway, let's get back into this action, Ooh. which is really beginning to build up. Burton seems to have taken the upper hand here. Well, that's that 50-pound that's that weight advantage that he has right now. But Burton's a tough customer, and he's had two fights already in the UWF International, so he's really aware of what to expect. This isn't going to be an easy fight for either of them. Both almost begrudgingly giving one another respect until they get the opportunity like we see there. And having that 50 pound weight advantage, Burton is taking control of the ring. And Miyato. Miyato does not want to step inside. He's gonna he's gonna keep throwing those low kicks. I see him just staying there continually chopping at him. Obviously Burton's favoring that leg. Yeah, but and he's, Miyato he's adjusting, knows that. He's adjusting that knee support because he's taking a fair bit of punishment to that knee now. That left knee is getting a fair pounding. And he's hitting him in the side of the leg, which is a dead leg. That's like at, um, when you're at school, when you knee your friends in the knee and they can't stand up anymore. That's, once you get a dead leg, you can't use that thing anymore. And once you're a one-legged fighter, there's no way you're going to be able to fight. Not really getting through there, Burton. No, those kicks, those knees are not getting through. There's no showboating in this sport, so... For those who want to play, I say stay away. Because this is, this a is real, the real stuff. This is a real sporting contest. They're out there to win. These are professional athletes in a legitimate fight. And this is very different from many wrestling styles that many viewers are used to watching. There we go. And he goes working to that leg again. He's got to get through at some stage. And there he is. He's and got it's through. Working. He's through. He's like he's chopping wood. And he's not blocking. No. Miyato went to that task as he was chopping down a tree. He continually chopped at him. Getting the count. He was sticking to that strategy. Look at this. I mean, he really went for him. When he went down, actually, Miyato just gave him a minor push. It's his leg that's giving yeah. out on him right now. Oh, brilliant strategy here. Going for the kill. And you notice all of Miyato's attacks are aimed at Burton's left leg. He's not attacking any other part of the body right now. No, he's got his game plan, or his fight plan, should I say, there are no games here. And, and it's he's obviously working. It. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, Burton's in trouble now. Burton's a one-legged fighter now. He's, he's got to do something quickly. One-legged. And he takes Ooh. him over with a front suplex. Burton's a wrestler, so he know, wrestlers are used to being slammed. They can fall. I don't know about the they, lock, though. He's simply looking for Sanctuary, he's, and he's got it. Now he's got a modified Boston Crab on him, and Burton has to escape to the rope. Sanctuary for Burton. But see it here. He's desperate, isn't he? Burton's got to do something right now. He can't just stand there and take all that. I he's got to move on much, the offensive. I don't see there being much he can do. What he has to do is what he's doing right now. He has Ooh. to get all over them. He can't stand away from Miyato and allow Miyato to throw all those punches, knees, and kicks. He has to be all over them. He has to stick on him like glue. Eyeball and take to him down eyeball. The mat. And yeah. it's working for him. What he has to do is use that 50-pound weight advantage. He can't be standing up and taking all those strikes. He's got a pretty... 
both are suffering at the moment and the referee seems to be in agreement and Miato had to go to the rope from Burton's Achilles tendon hold yeah and it seems to have affected him a little bit we'll soon yeah. see no he's, but he's back still to his chopping job and he's doing that same kick and Burton's not doing such a good job at blocking that. It's obviously getting through, but... Showing after, amazing resilience, though, Burton. After taking as many low kicks as Burton does, I don't think I'd be able to lift my leg up to block it either. But he's got Miato down, and, I mean, he's certainly going to work on him on the floor now. He has to. He has to keep him on the floor. Like I said, he has to stick to him like glue and not stand away. He can't allow those strikes. I mean, approaching the fight oh. stages, this is an exciting finish. The double arm suplex on Burton. Burton does a double arm suplex on Miato. He's going to try to do it again. I wonder if no. Burton could actually nick this. It looks no. as though he could nick it. This a would be an upset. Bomb. And now he's going for a double leg boss. This would be an upset. Right this in the is middle amazing. of the ring. I think he's got it. The first win for Burton. And is he up? Is he amazing? And boy, is he happy. Oh, that is euphoria. Yes. Let's see it again. Burton with a Boston Crab. Well, the winner, Tom Burton, and a happy winner. Next on the bill is Kiyoshi Tamura versus Yoji Anjo. In the red corner is Yoji Anjo, coming in at 210 pounds, the all-round fighter who is an excellent kickboxer and has excellent wrestling skills as well. His opponent tonight, Kiyoshi Tamura, coming in at 200 pounds, a very good submission wrestler, excellent on the ground. The bout begins as we start this match. Here we have it, Tamura in the blue corner, Anjo in the red corner, and those distinctive leopard tights of his. Anjo going for those kicks and his, those knees, which he's so good at. I thought we were going to see a backflip then. I thought we were about to see some true Western expression from these fighters. Both getting to the task very, very quickly into this fight. Drops him on the back of the neck. Now that's the difference between a real throw and other I'd, things that we might have seen before. I'd go along with that. Both very, very evenly matched in size and athletic, athletic um, ability here. Oh, beauty. Beautiful takedown. Now, when Anjo was doing that takedown, he wasn't meaning to hurt Tamaro with that takedown. He was just trying to set him up for a submission hold. When they're on the ground, they are not just looking for a breather. They're not looking to relax. They're looking for an opening to get a submission hold and possibly just put an end to a match. So every, every move does have a sequence. I mean, there's a motive to their madness. Yes. Well, and thankfully, discipline madness in this case. And unlike many other wrestling forms, just because you're on your back and the guy's on the top does not mean that you are necessarily um, at a disadvantage. You could, be, you could have the advantage over the other guy. I mean, this is very much the thinking man's thinking man's sport. I mean, the crowd look very, very intense. And you'd almost think them non-enthusiastic, but they are very, very much, you know, absorbed in these matches. The Japanese crowd is well-educated. They, they know those moves. They understand the moves. They enjoy the science behind this. I mean, you know, opposed to the Western crowds that would be up out of their chairs, really, you know, sort of hooling and houting. I mean, the Japanese crowd are just really getting into every single move, every single grimace. And then when it warrants it, the full expression of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a knockout. Anjo tried to take Tamura over, but not too successful. <laughs> Tamura has a beautiful face Here lock on go. Anjo. Here now we he go. Switches into a sleeper hold. I think there could be an early upset Anjo in here. a great deal of trouble right now. Tamura seems to early have it. in the match. The referee's looking for the submission. You see the shoot sign. And the crowd actually living up to the billing. Wada asking Anjo, are you ready to give up? But Anjo reverses it on him, and he actually has a straight arm bar, and Tamura has to escape to the rope. Close so far. Anjo is a much more experienced fighter. It's, but um, Tamura is a great up-and-coming wrestler, and he's really looking for that win. He wants to climb the ladder. 
My hardest bouts always came from the young upstarts, so I would definitely not underestimate Tamura. He's looking for that victory. He wants to climb the ladder, get Ooh. up there. But I think he's about to be put down a peg or two. He's a little bit in trouble right now. His kicks are bothering him. Beautiful wrestling move. Oh, Tamura, excellent skill. It's reversal after re reversal. Glided out of that move. And Anjo has Tamura in a face lock right now, but he gets out of that and goes for a sleeper hold. Excellent. This is high quality stuff we're seeing. And the crowd are being appreciative as well. The referee looking for that submission, it's but amazing. he ain't getting it. Each time they see an opening, they manage to grab it. I mean, Tamura going for that climbing of the ladder all the way to the top. New WF. Angel looks like he's able to get out. He has his leg and he goes for a cross lock. Ooh, we're close to the ropes though. The ropes may save him. The referee's looking for a submission. Tamura oh, got, he has an he got the ropes. Sanctuary. That was close. Those submission holds are so dangerous. Ooh. You could you could snap anybody's joint at any time, and one misconception a lot of people are under might be under is if they see this, they might think, oh yeah, it's just a bunch of big strong guys trying to twist each other in a pretzel. It's not. Those aren't strength. That's not strength they're doing that with. It's all leverage. That's why a small man can beat a bigger man on any given occasion, any given day, because I don't care how big and strong you are. If you hit a vulnerable point, you can always beat a man, and there's no way to get out of a submission hold once it's applied fully correctly. I'll testify to that. But the action really seems to be of a high quality and high order. I mean, we're seeing move after move avoided here. They're that both very evenly matched. Tamura was going for the cross like he flipped over Anjo, but Anjo was quick enough to <laughs> get up and try to get him. The audacity of the youngster. I think Anjo will have something to say about that little move. Anjo got, has him in a leg breaker right now. He's digging his elbow into the side of his leg and pulling up. That's leverage right there. He's pushing with the elbow and he's lifting the foot with his hands. It's push and pull. It's leverage. I mean, apart from everything else, they show amazing mobility and flexibility because those ankles are being stretched pretty, pretty much to the limit. Yes. Tamura looking for a chance to reverse this. And neither of them looking for the good old sanctuary. So the referee looking for the submission, but not too much giving at the moment from either fighter. And the crowd appreciates the fact when they do escape to the ropes. It's not because he's trying to evade the action or anything. It's because he wants to continue the fight. They understand that once in a submission hold is applied, that there's no way to get out of it except to either escape to the rope or give up. We call it he who, he who fights and runs away and lives to fight another day. But anyway, I know Ooh. what you mean, but here we go. Beautiful keys. Oh. Tamira's under the cosh at the moment. And now Anjo is applying what is called uh, um, the clock head scissors hold on Tamura right now, but Tamura gets out of it. Beautiful wrestling. Ooh. Oh, Tamura's really picked up again. Beautiful gear. heel strikes. Anjo's in trouble, but he's fighting back. Ooh. He Tamura getting his own medicine here. Tamura's in trouble. Holding on for dear life, I think would be the app statement. Will he go to the ropes? Great action here on UWF. And Joe in the red trunks. Oh, he reverses that, comes on the back. No, sorry, correction. I'm sorry, Tamura's in the red trunks. The action's that fast. And Joe in his leopard, leopard, leopard skin bottoms, actually holding on now. The action's fast and furious. Tamura has a good sleeper hold on Anjo. The only problem is he's having trouble wrapping his legs around his stomach, and that's why Anjo is able to roll out of it. Oh, yes, now he crowd. manages to cross his legs. Now he managed to cross his legs, but he's kind of let go of the top. This crowd is really getting behind Tamura. I think they sense an upset here. A very educated crowd here. They understand what's going on. They understand submission. They and understand Joe's this real tired. submission wrestling. And just looking around for some sort of inspiration, but I don't think it's there at the moment. Yeah, he's trying to reverse it. And it looks 
You watch Ryo Gakuwada, the referee. He's um, giving the shoot sign right now, asking Tamura if he's ready to give up. The shoot sign, obviously the submission. Oh, but he manages to escape to the ropes. Tamura showing great ability. Tamura in the red trunks, but finding out of the blue corner. Ooh. Giving up a brilliant display here against a rather more experienced Anjo. You know, Tamura, Tamura is kind of standing in a wrestling stance. I think that's a little bit dangerous. He should keep his hands a little bit higher. He's not protecting his head that well. You're more the more conventional Western style of, of stance, where you've got the ability to move forward, back, and get out of the way. He should be, he should be protecting his face as well. He seems to have the speed on Anjo, though. Seems to be getting the best of the exchanges at the moment. It's kind of hard to say. They're pretty... I don't know. Anjo, Anjo is higher ranked. Tamura is a new up-and-comer, but he's certainly holding his own, and in some many cases doing better. He's weathering a lot of Anjo's attack. Well, I'm going to be a betting man, and I'm actually going to go for Tamura because he's that <laughs> exciting for me. I'm going to have to take a bit of a risk here. Age v. experience. Anjo a little frustrated right now. <laughs> I don't blame him. He's trying to go for the leg cross lock, but Tamura's all over the place. He's not standing still for Anjo. And I mean, there are no easy bouts in, in this type of fighting, but I'm sure Anjo wasn't expecting such a rough, rough bout. But Tamura's a tough customer, and he has a lot to prove. Any <laughs> oh, any... <laughs> I don't believe it! That's Tamura beautiful. actually going for him! Certainly one of the stars of the future fighting here tonight. And I Can't. think he might get the upset. Oh, but Ooh. he has a bad center of balance. Yeah, and he, he lost it. Ooh. Oh, Anjo is certainly looking for retaliation. And they're counting that as a knockdown. He didn't really hit him that hard with that. The no, knee I... kind of slipped off to the side, but. I didn't think that warranted a, a count, but. But they're actually calling that a knockdown. And Joe hadn't actually lost a point up until then, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this is a crucial stage of the fight for me. And the crowd well absorbed. Anjo with a good body blow there. Anjo has his leg caught, but usually he can manage to do... Ooh! Ooh, and I'm happy... A spinning back what. kick, he tried to get out, but Tamura I think he's saw got it, it coming. I think he's got it! He Will might he make get the rope? rope. I doubt it. That was very close. Very close. There's a bit of a gap beginning to emerge now. But something's got to give. Will it be the more experienced Anjo or the new pretender Tamura? Has An he got what it takes? Anjo's ahead five points now, but that you could change very quickly. Well, I can tell you from where I'm sitting, I'd go for the man Tamura. He certainly seems to be the more exciting and the fitter and the faster at the moment. Anjo is trying to shoot for a suplex. Tamura realized that and he dropped down to a quarter position. This is some intense battle. I mean, Anjo. it really is a case now of who will give first, I think, that will decide the winner here. Anjo has um, a heel hold on him. Back to the ropes of Sanctuary. Tamura using his strategy to good effect. We can see here he just reaches for that rope. That really hurt him. That's bothering Tamura. Tamura should be protecting his head more in the standing position. Beautiful sequence of throws there, seeing Anjo on top. Anjo wasn't trying to hurt Tamura with that, that w with that particular throw. He's just trying to get him down to the ground so he can look for a submission. Get to work on him. Ooh, but yes. now Tamura is reversing him, and he's caught Anjo in a double wrist lock. And he makes Anjo escape. Anjo's looking tired. He's looking at his wrist as though he's looking at a watch. As he's looking for a, a, see a some idea of how long he's got. But both fighters looking amazingly fresh, considering. Oh, ooh, that was effective. It didn't look it. It Actually, didn't look it. He's, I don't know why that's three, bothering so much. I didn't, four, I, five, I didn't really think that that kick had much authority seven, in it, but obviously eight, it did. I think he may well. 
He's still on his feet. But no. No, he doesn't. No. Look. But the referee's allowing it to continue. And, and Joe going for the over. kill. Achilles tendon hold. That Achilles tendon hold seems to be the one they all go for. That's the one that Kakihara got injured in. Now, Anjo's going for a Boston Crab. He he doesn't have his weight on it yet. No. As you can see, Tamura has his left knee bent no. and he's fighting it. Nowhere near the type of poise we saw Takado demonstrate earlier. And Tamura makes it back to the ropes. I don't know how many more escapes he can survive. But as you can see here, there just wasn't the right poise, was there? Tamura only with four points left. Tamura's really tough. Oh, Anjo, Anjo goes for a front suplex, but it's not too successful. And um, Tamura's reversing it and trying to apply the cross lock. He almost did. Anjo close enough to the ropes to escape. Both fighters looking tired, but as we see, Anjo just staying ahead. Plenty of action in this bout. Ooh. A good kick. Good knees. Round the body into the stomach. And once again, he takes him down. And going for that ankle yet again. Got to, Tamura's got to watch this. If he goes for Sanctuary again, it could cost him the bout. Ah, a tugging of the hair. <laughs> Tamura doesn't like it. Anjo doesn't think... like him slapping him around. <laughs> this is great stuff. And <laughs> Tamura going for the Boston Crab. And Anjo just trying to slap him around from that position. But Anjo's not about to let Tamura give him up to that hold. No, he's fighting from the floor. Oh, and he, he looks like he could get a straight leg. Yes, and he does. Excellent wrestling. He just reversed it into a straight leg bar. Tamura down now to three points in this bout. <laughs> One more knockdown and Tamura's finished. He'll run out of points. And he come, could come close to it now. There can't be long left in this bout. And Yoshi Knee to and the head, stomach. And Anjo seems to know it. It's almost as though they've got stopwatches in their brains. They seem to just pick up the action just when it happens to count. But Tamura's tough. He, he keeps on going. He... Tough, rough, but possibly not good enough here because Anjo's going for the and kill. And there's the Boston Crab. There's the ah, half crab, and there, he can't get out of is, it. There it is. A brilliant show by the young Tamura. But I think as we see here in slow motion... Experience won tonight's fight. Yoji Anjo is the winner. <laughs> Next on the bill, USA's JT Southern versus Kazuo Yamazaki. Fighting out of the red corner is JT Southern from the United States, coming in at 235 pounds, his second fight in the UWF International. The UWF fighter in the blue corner, Kazuo Yamazaki, coming in at 230 pounds. Excellent Muay Thai-style kickboxer and wrestler. Bout begins with Yamazaki in the blue corner and JT Southern in the red corner. Southern looking to redeem himself and get an all-important first win. And boy, does Yamazaki look confident right now. A total drop of the arms. I think that is a true sign of arrogance and non-respect for your opponent. What he's trying to do is he's tr in, trying to intimidate his opponent. Not sure about JT Southern's outfit. I mean, um, part part of part and parcel of the package. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's one of his tactics. He's trying to distract Yamazaki by wearing that. <laughs> Yamazaki quite quite content to just feel his way around. JT Southern wanted to get to work very, very early in this bout. Yamazaki going, trying to go for an arm lock. Now he's trying to go for a leg lock. 
applied the Achilles tendon hold. Not applying too much pressure right now at this point, as JT is trying to reverse it on him. It's almost that hushed silence from the crowd, isn't it? I mean, it's, as you say, they really just wait and look, listen and watch. A very educated crowd. They know what's going on. They uh, can appreciate submission holds. They know that anybody can beat any man at any, on any given night with a submission hold, and they're just waiting to see if this is going to be the end of the match. It, you never know when a match is going to end. We've already seen one American win in this program. With Burton winning over Miato, could we see the same in this bout? Well, in the first match, there was a major weight difference. Miato coming in at 200 pounds while Burton had a 50 pound weight advantage. This particular fight, there's not, well, there's a five pound difference, but they're pretty much the same height and weight. So both are going to have to exert their skills to see who will come out on top on this one. So, pretty evenly matched. Be interesting to see. Well, I don't know about evenly matched, but height and weight wise, yes. Uh, but from the technique side, it has to be Yamazaki. Uh, I I'd go with Yamazaki on this fight. Like I've said before, many of the American fighters, they're either boxers, kickboxers, or wrestlers. There's not too many people who can do it all. And that's one problem all the Ameri many Americans have to face when they come over here. Have we seen any fighters from Europe actually willing to take the plunge? And I don't include myself Not yet. in that, by the way. Not yet, but um, we'll accept anybody's challenge. You well, there you go. Any fighters out there from Europe who seem to wish to want to take part and play? As I said, if you're not prepared to play, stay away because this is UWF. Hey, UWF International will take on any challenge from anybody. I don't think you'll get a much clearer invitation than that. But back to the action and pretty subdued at the moment by UWF standards. Yeah, it like he hasn't really gotten serious yet. It seems like he's still... It seems to be one of the more leisurely bouts I think he's, he will have taken on board. Well, he's, he sought to kind of fight JT the last time, and um, I think he's trying the same strategy. He's just going to sit around. He's going to study his opponent. He's not going to jump into anything. He's not going to just throw meaningless weapons at his opponent just in desperation to have anything hit. He's going to look for an opening. <laughs> he's actually stretching his neck. <laughs> he's in no rush to win this fight. Now I can see that. Yamazaki waiting for an opening right now, and JT Southern thinking about what he should do. Certainly looking for the openings, but he's, as he said, he's in no hurry, Yamazaki. JT, is, JT really doesn't know what to do right now. He seems like he really doesn't have a strategy. He should be attacking somehow. He can't just stay there and wait for Yamazaki to come for him, because Yamazaki is not going to do that. He's not going to come running in. As you said earlier, um, JT Southern just seems limited in what he seems to be able to put by Amazak at the moment, who has a formidable arsenal that he can call on at any time. We've not even seen much use of the ropes in this bout, so that, I, I think, reflects the action we've seen so far. Right now, I don't think anything's going to really happen, although Yamazaki's on top and trying to go for a submission. If he manages to apply the submission, he's too close to the ropes. JT's too close to the ropes. He'll be able to escape right away. <laughs> Yamazaki's rubbing his forearm into JT's face right now, trying to aggravate him, trying to make him come alive. Well, if that doesn't, nothing will. But as you can see, I think JT's southern pride will begin to surface soon. And as you see that look... And a rope escape by JT. So one point difference. Seems like is something's hurting. Oh, Ooh. there it was. I there suppose it, it was almost too good to be true. A wrestler taking it is easy. He's just too susceptible to the low kick. Oh, but a he brilliant response. He takes him down. Stun Yamazaki, but he should be all right. Look at this. I Here mean, he is, boom, right away. Explosion. Explosive. This is how the low kick changes the sport so much. A wrestler's stance is just so susceptible to kicking. 
JT Southern giving it back though. He's going for the half crab. Body kicks and leg lock. JG trying to apply the submission. Yamazaki pushes him away with the kick. One, but he's three, going down. I, I don't understand why he's going four, down from there. He, he just pushed him away. Oh! Yamazaki is irritated. And he, he certainly shown his irritation he there. He, he, he didn't really kick him in the face. He just pushed him away, and yet he went down for the count i don't understand what's happening but yamazaki actually kicked jt sudden off during well, he's the aggravated count. right now yamazaki is getting frustrated and that left leg is suffering jt southern in trouble now he's not fighting back interesting to see that yamazaki wasn't penalized but, oh that's got him yamazaki is getting frustrated that jt is not fighting back right now so he really is treating him with contempt now and he's going again Oh, yes. And JT, does, he, he's not doing anything. He doesn't know what to do at this point. And he I has a dead leg. He's a one-legged fighter, if he even has one leg to stand on. Yeah, Mazaki's saying, come on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And he's, this is what I'm talking about, the wrestlers being susceptible to the low kick. They don't know what to do one, about that. Two, and he's getting a count. Three, four, JT Southern in trouble five, here. Six, and, Jeff, you know seven, how devastating those eight. low kicks can be. Oh no, believe me, I've had one and the referee stepped in. You can keep two. You can see now, coming to the final stages, but Yamazaki yeah, going oh. for his win. I mean, oh, this I is I can silly. feel that from here. This is clinical. JD totally defenseless. He grabs one kick and pushes him down. Almost in desperation. Yamazaki with a leg cross lock. Yamazaki's yeah, going for it. I think he's got it. I mean, there was no way back from that for JT Sutton. There was no way back for him JT whatsoever. JT just wasn't fighting back. As Yamazaki signals. He didn't know what to do about that. You aren't in the same league. Clinical finishing. So the winner, Kazuo Yamazaki. Top of the bill tonight, Tatsuo Nakano versus Nobuhiko Takada. Nakano Fighting out of the red corner is Tatsuo Nakano coming in at 215 pounds, a real tough customer who never gives up. His opponent, Nobuhiko Takara, another UWFI stylist, coming in at 230 pounds. So the tough man against the all action, Takara. Takano in the blue corner, Nakano in the red corner. This one promises to be an all action bout, as it was top of the billing would suggest. Well, this is a 45 minute bout, but I seriously doubt that we'll go 45 minutes with it. Takata just throwing some distance kicks. He, he's not throwing him with authority right now. He's just trying to set distance. Sizing him up for the kill? Well, he's trying to set up his distance. Make an opening. Distract him. Takato fainting there. That was something we used to do to good effect in our sport. One thing that's different about the kicking in this UWF style is it's not like in kickboxing where you can like throw a combination of kicks. You can't throw like two or three low kicks and then go for a middle kick and then go for a high, ki high kick and go head hunting. Because in this sport, you're allowed to grab the guy's leg. As we're seeing Nakano demonstrate here is he's grabbing, grabbing Takano and taking him down to the floor. So you really won't see more than two or three combinations at once. You don't really get the chance. <laughs> because if you try to throw too many kicks at one time, you're bound to ha your opponent's bound to be able to catch one. Kano very much respected Takada's height, though. Sending to faint, get in and come out and see what's there before actually making his move. That's why you notice right now, Nakano's a tough wrestler. And Takada is definitely the dominant kicker. But you, you notice Takada is not throwing a combination of kicks. Like I said earlier, he's not going to throw two or three kicks in one shot. 
because um, Nakano's tough enough to grab one of those kicks and be able to drag him down and start wrestling him. That's why you're, Takata's looking for a one-shot opening rather than throwing two or three combinations at once. Is that, is that Nakano's best and only chance of winning this bout? To take, him, to take Takata onto the floor? I'd have to say so. Takata definitely the dominant kicker. Well, a, a very good low kick in Nakano's own there to Takato's left thigh. I mean, don't get me wrong, Nakano is capable at kicking, but... One problem I see with Nakano, you might notice his stance is a little bit too wide. His legs are too... his center of gravity, I'm talking about. His legs are a little bit widely spread. Yeah, but... Oh, and Takata saying, what was that? And he's given one back of his own and he takes... Oh, yes! This is brilliant one-upmanship. This is about to save a fight, fans. Takano and Nakano ready to go. You notice Nakano's stance is a little bit wide. He might be open for a low kick, but then he might. Then again, maybe he's just taunting Takata. He's saying, "Come on, throw a low kick," because Nakano knows how to block kicks. I don't think Nakano cares or Takata cares. I think they're just very much wanting to get into this. And Nakano, whoever wins this. Nakano is really a notorious slow starter. It seems like he really has to get hurt before he wakes up and comes alive. But then after that, watch out. He never gives up and he keeps just coming for more. Well, we've seen the sparks. Let's wait for the explosion. But I think that Takata has the stamina and capability to continually, continually dish out the punishment on Nakano. Well I, must, well, I, well, I must say this is one position I wouldn't be too keen on if I got into this. So I remember doing judo and being put off it immediately. That's a bit too intimate for me. I like keeping them at a distance. But Takata shows amazing agility and his ability to just, you know, slide out of that and just take the upper hand. I guess in amateur wrestling you would say that Takata had the advantage. But in this style of wrestling, you really don't know. It's the uncertainty, I think, that brings the level of excitement to fever pitch in this Definitely. sport. Definitely. This is the toughest, most demanding sport that you've ever seen. This is the way wrestling, real submission wrestling, was many decades ago in Europe, with the addition of the martial arts aspects, with the addition of the Western boxing, the hits, the punching, the knees, and the kicks. Oh, yes, a beautiful takedown by Takada. And he wasn't even worried about following it up. Here we see it again. Here. He just took him off balance. Takada threw a low kick. Nakano tried to block it with his left leg, but the trouble was he lifted his leg a little bit too high, and it went under and caught him in the right leg that he was standing on and knocked him off balance. Nothing too serious. Nothing too serious. <laughs> it looks serious to me. Well, I'm not up there. Neither am I. <laughs> Easy for us to say. They're kind of trying to apply a heel hold right now. But being close to the ropes, Takara, I don't think should have a trouble, any trouble. And he's trying to apply, um, counter it. Will fighters in some instances simply just go for sanctuary and touch the ropes just to get back into the center of the ring? Well... If, if your opponent is applying a submission hold and it seems to be working and you're in danger, yes, you're going to escape. You're going to escape to the rope. But in many cases, um, like right now, Wada is, has a double shoot sign, which means both of the men are applying a submission hold. None seem too perturbed by one another's attention. Ah, Takata shows. Oh, he got oh, a heel hold. Yeah, something was afoot Nakano there. Nakano came out on top on that one and. I think that will give Nakano actually, confidence. Actually, he's a point ahead now. Takano looks a little worried. It looks like a knee injury there. And Nak Nakano looks like he's already trying to shoot for the kill. Number of knees. This could be an upset. Oh, this could be an upset. Down. This could be an upset. Nakano going for it. Only Takata's one point stunned difference. from that. Ooh. This will be Beautiful the sign. Beautiful heel strike. This will be the sign of a true champion. Let's see where Takada, what has he got in reserve? But the knee seems to be troubling him. Yeah, he's, he, Takada's going to get up. 
Can Nakano finish though? As we can see here, he looks very much on top. Nakano didn't jump in as much as he could have. He could have put more weight into that hit, but he was scared that he probably was going to get caught. Nakano looking confident, but Takada seems to Takes have... Him up, Ooh. slams him down. That really hurt. I'd agree Takada's with that. actually util utilizing Nakano's is. weight against him. And look at the poise in Takada's stance. I think we saw in one of the earlier bouts where there just didn't seem that leverage. Takada seems to get really low for a man of his size. He's not sitting on his back. You notice Nakano's sitting sideways. Exactly. That's we the only thing that's protecting him right now. How Nak do you like Nakano's cauliflower ear? I must admit, <laughs> certainly not something to be fancied. But as I said, going back to Takada, referee looking for that submission and not getting it. And Takada isn't going to let Nakano out of this. Something's got to give here. Single leg, single leg crab by Takata right now. Nakano seems to be in a safe position as of now. But no, no, no. There it is. Here now it is. there it is. That's what Takata has to be doing. He has to be putting his weight on Nakano's back, pulling it up, and applying pressure on the Achilles tendon at the same time. But Nakano's a tough cookie, because I can tell you, Takata I, is, is crawling for that rope. He's crawling for sanctuary. Really? I'm no. telling you. Nakano's a tough customer. I've never seen anybody who can take as much punishment as he can and come back. Takata looks frustrated, and Nakano lives to fight another day. Just making it to the ropes there. And he's still back on his feet. What a resilient competitor. Ooh. Oh, yes. Takata going up Nakano's again. Oh, really what hurt. a beautiful spinning jump kick. Now, if Nakano gets back from that with even points, that's more than a kick. I think Nakano was hurting from previous moves. And he's back up again. I told you, this boy never quits. That's amazing. And as you said, the trouble is there's nothing being held back here. So kind of moving like Western-style boxing, bobbing and weaving, in and out. Flurrying. Beautiful athlete. Oh, yes. The Japanese crowd really enjoying this sporting contest. I mean, that flurry takes a lot of stamina, let me tell you. Kano looks a little bit in the, in the, in the seat to see at the moment, a little bit lost. Oh, Ooh, he yes. caught a beautiful... Oh, yes. Takata catches Nakano with a beautiful kick to the head, but there again, I told you how tough Nakano was. He still held he on. He took it. He just took that kick, and now he's going for a reversed Achilles tendon hold on Takata. I mean, he took that kick, still held on, and applied his own lock. I mean, that's quite amazing. Well, Nakano's my resilient fighter. Takata's the main man. But we've got to see something's got to give here tonight. Nakano with a face lock. He's Takada. applying pressure, pressure on the cheekbone. The bony part of his wrist, he's digging it into the cheekbone. That's what makes it so painful. You probably can't see it on the TV, but that's what Nakano's doing right no, now. I can, see it. I can see it on his face, though. That looks painful. And we get a far more clearer look. It's either in the jaw or the cheekbone. You take the bony part of your wrist and you dig it in there. Takata makes the ropes for the sanctuary. One point in it at this moment. Top of the bill stuff here on UWF. Nice Ooh. kicks, but you, you notice how good Nakano's blocking oh. those kicks. But a few have got to get through eventually. Oh, oh yes, see, and that one, was straight to the in, stomach. Two, two dropped. One, two. He can't just sit there and keep on blocking him. He was doing a great oh. job blocking him, but... I mean, after about like 10 or 20 kicks, oh. one or two is bound to get in there. And he's up. The man is up. This he blocks here. that one. But this one, one in. That and one. again, in. You don't stand up from those, let me tell you. But Nakano's still there. And giving a brilliant account of himself. And he's not giving up. Takata There's... with the knees. But Nakano seems to Sleeper take the advantage hold. now. Oh, the, I mean, this is incredible. The crowd are really going with one or the other. I'm not sure who. This could be it. We've got to see a winner here somewhere. They're cheering. Nakano, Nakano. Nakano's Nakano. getting the cheering. Could we see an upset? 
maybe he's going for the cross lock. No, it's not there, but yeah. No, Nakata no goes. Nakata's going for the cross lock on the leg. And, and Nakano Nakano's got to, a kick out. Nakano's giving up. It's on the belt. Was there a submission? Yes. We'll see here. Takata, yes, Takata yes, had a cross lock on the leg. Couldn't see it. There was so much action. The winner, Nabahiko Takata. But what a brilliant performance by Nakano.